or from trach to trach from trach stuff. Yeah. yeah. What about oxygen? Do you guys do oxygen and things like that? Do you sell like the cannulas from the trach or? Yeah. Those? Do you? Yeah. And then dressings and things yeah. around. Okay. The ties. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. This kind of gives me a little bit better idea of what you guys are doing now. Well, if you're dealing with ostomy, this is going to be <laughs> this is going to be nothing. I'm not sure if I was supposed to wait for kind of a high sure sign to somebody or because like, um, I've got ten o'clock, so I'm not sure how many people. Wait, I'm listening. Let's verify if we're good to go. I'd just go ahead and start. Just go ahead and start? Yeah, I think so. Right. Yeah. Let's get going. Okay. Right. Chris, are we good? Or We're good. We're good? Okay. I mean, I'm blathering and it's taking. Take one. <laughs> Take one. <laughs> Very good. Um, well, good morning, everyone. Um, I'm Matt Borman with First Quality. I'm National Accounts Director for Home Care. And this is Christine Fernell. Uh, the, the binders that we're handing out are for the demonstration purposes here this morning, so please don't take them from your turn when you're done. Uh, we're going to be passing these out to the customer service group. So each of the customer service team members will have one of these. Um, we'll get them back to you after the, after the presentation. But this is kind of our guide for the presentation this morning. Um, what Christine and I are here to do is to really give you a full snapshot of the incontinence category. And, uh, Everything from uh, bladder control pads to protective underwear to underpads to baby diapers, everything in between. Uh, but what I'm going to do primarily is tell you a little bit about First Quality and who we are as an organization because I think when you partner up with a company like ours, it's important for you to know who you're partnering with because you're going to be dealing with patients on the phone and your recommendation of our products are very important. So I think it's important for you to know the company that you partnered up with as you make those recommendations to your customers. Um, and then Christine is going to go through this binder that we put out in front of all of you all uh, in more intricate detail, talk about incontinence 101, talk about the specific products in each category. Uh, we've got samples of every product that's in the catalog uh, that we're going to pass around to you guys. You can touch them and you can feel them. We'll talk about the different strengths, different types of products in each category, why we have different products in each category, um, and, and, and go from there. So this is a pretty open session. So if you have questions as we're going through it, you know, please feel free to raise your hand, interrupt. We want this to be an open discussion, an open dialogue with you all. Um, and this is the first of many times you'll see us, quite honestly. We plan to be here quite a bit over the coming years. So um, we appreciate the opportunity to work with you guys. And please don't hesitate to give us a call if you have any questions after the meeting as well. Um, regarding First Quality, I'll kind of touch on the company as a whole. Uh, first Quality is a family-owned company. We started the business, no, we, they started the company about 20 years ago. Um, and they primarily started their business in the long-term care market. Um, and, and 20 years ago, long-term care market was dominated by a lot of other manufacturers that were selling product in that space, and First Quality saw a need. And they saw a need for a high-quality product that was cost-competitive, but that performed for patients that were in products 24 hours a day. Um, since then, and when we started the company, the company started with six employees and about 40,000 square feet of manufacturing. Uh, that was based in Maclaw, Pennsylvania. Uh, since then, uh, the company has grown to be the industry leader in incontinence, not only in long-term care, but also in the home care market, which is where a lot of the customers that you work with today, and in the retail market. So uh, this is our branded product here that we have today that's in the long-term care and home care market. But then when you go into the retail market, we do private labor for companies like Walgreens, CVS, Brian. So all of the products that you see on their shelves, for the most part, about 90% market share in that market, are our first quality products and first quality products that are branded in those drugstore names. Um, so people really respect our products, customers are using them, they're paying their hard-earned money for our products every day, so they're high-performing products. Um, in the long-term care market, you have people that are in, in the products 24 hours a day. So we have a full line of product, everything from you know, baby diapers and a newborn up to bariatric brief, which we'll show you here today, which fits someone who's eight feet around in circumference. So um, we've got the full line of products to offer to you. Um, as we grew, we've also been expanding our manufacturing. So as I mentioned, we started off with six employees and uh, uh, 40,000 square feet of manufacturing. Today, First Quality has 10 million square feet of manufacturing, 3,800 employees, all manufacturing our products here in the United States. Uh, we're a U.S. manufacturing company. We're going to stay U.S. Man manufacturing. So I'm um, very proud about that to be able to employ jobs here in the U.S. So very happy to be partnered with you guys today. Uh, what Christine's going to go through is the different product categories of the products that we have, go through really giving you education on incontinence. So if you have questions, you know, again, you know, please ask us. We'll, we'll try and do our best to answer them for you. 
Um, but we're excited to be here today and, and look forward to working with you day in and day out as we move forward. Here. So thank you again. Just see how fast I'll keep you doing. Great. Thanks. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Everyone has a, a booklet. And I think what we're going to do today is we're going to basically go through what's in the book, just sort of let our fingers do the walking, so to speak. But just, just as a, just sort of a basic, I just want to do a little bit of an introduction into incontinence, the intro to INCO, so to speak. Uh, you know, really sort of what it is and why people have some of these needs. Obviously, we'll go through the products, when people are typically using them, when they're not, et cetera. Go through what um, some of the, the patients or customers who are calling in or their, their caregivers calling in, what kinds of things that they might be asking you, what kinds of habits they might be in, and just talk about the new business that you're going to be getting with, uh, with these customers calling in. Now, I don't know how long some of you have, have worked here, but do, does anyone really have much um, experience with incontinence and, and working in customer service with customers like that? Not really? Okay. But I know that you guys have been doing some ostomy, right? Yeah. So, um, and you've been doing uh, urologicals, things like that. So I know that you're kind of used to dealing with with, uh, with patients or customers. I'm not sure which acronym you're, or which you're using, what you're calling your Patients. Your time patients, okay. So when they're when they're calling in, I know that you're used to talking with them about some very personal things. Um, so this won't be any different, and, and I think you all have quite a bit of experience with that. Um, I've been with First Quality about seven years, just about seven years. Before that, I spent 16 years in an HME, and so I've been doing all. I used to do all the same things that you guys did too. So I I, I fully remember doing all that with ostomy, with wound, with urologicals, with incontinence, with all of that. So we'll go through pretty much all of that. I've got some extra books on the table. If anyone comes in or um, and needs a booklet, we'll do that. So in the first part, under your table of contents, it just has a, a section that does describe all of the different sections that are in the booklet with all of the different tabs. We're going to go through them pretty much sort of one by one. Your order guide looks like this. Your order guide is actually comprised of three different sections, and that represents three, three tiers or, or three types of products. So the first page, which, what are we calling it? We're calling it product recommendation one. This is where you'll pretty much start, and these are the products you'll start with. You don't have to memorize this page. You all are going to be getting all of that. But what I wanted to outline to you was that there's going to be three different sections. Section one or product recommendation one is pretty much going to be the one that you'll always start with. So you'll have your, your uh, briefs, your, your, your uh, protective underwear, all of those things under section one or product, sorry, product recommendation one. On the other side, you can see that you have two more sections. So that will be product recommendation two and product recommendation three. And we'll explain that in, in a little bit. So product recommendation one, sorry, is going to be the first set that you go with, and then two and three if for some reason you need to make some changes. Does that make sense to everyone? Do you kind of do that with some of the other products as well? One, two, and three. Yes and no. Sorry. Yeah, okay. we do have the ones that we recommend. You know, we kind of have a list mm -hmm. for that that supplies the other secondaries that we recommend. Okay. All right. So it's a concept everyone I think is sort of used to, right? Okay. So you will have that with incontinence as well, and we will be describing them as as uh, one, two, and three. And I think what you'll find a lot of times is with patients, this is going to be your entry level products. So these are going to be the products that are standard for majority of people in the business today. But in the incontinence, needs change. So you may find someone that has a higher need for a product, and if you do, then you look at your product recommendation two and your product recommendation three. Product recommendation three is, is one of our highest level products. So as you work through that list, you're going to get people that are going to onboard with an entry level product, which is a, is a good product, standard product in the industry. And then as the need progresses, there's other products that you can choose throughout the list. So you're not just locked into one particular product, but this is the standard product and a great product directly. So that's kind of the philosophy behind it. Because there'll be different needs for different patients. When um, when are you going to um, 
go over the tree, the actual productivity of that. Is that in here as well? I don't think the tree is in there, is it? Okay, when, what, what time, because that made a whole lot of sense to understand the product on how you chose it. Mm -hmm. For me. Oh, okay. I understand. Uh, yeah. So I didn't. I don't know if I'm skipping thunder here. Or not. <laughs> oh, that's quite all right. Um, it, it's kind of built into the process to get here without having the exact, exact tree itself built okay. in uh, as to how the catalog is laid out with the lighter products following into the heavier products. We can certainly pass around the decision tree as well and talk about that. Well, I'm just saying, Christine made it into uh, apples and oranges yesterday in about 30 seconds. <laughs> so if she has a great explanation that made a lot of sense to you on how you choose. So um, if you're probably heading in that direction. I so. am. All right. <laughs> what I want this to will make sense is my point in just a short while. This will make a lot of sense. Yeah. What I wanted to, to, to really show you first is just to, to show you what these products actually sort of look like. What is what is a brief? What is a protective underwear? And what is a pad? Because, because I know a lot of you haven't really been working with these products, um, especially in the adult world. Uh, we call them something different. What a brief is in the adult world is, is what some people call an adult diaper. Now, because we are dealing with adults and because we are dealing with dignity, we don't call it that. But a first run, heavy incontinence, diaper life, but please don't call it that for the adults, is called a brief. So whenever I'm saying brief, this is what I mean. Does that make sense to everyone? In the kid world, what, what comes after a brief? A pull-up, right? <laughs> so in the adult world, what we call it is protective underwear. You've seen these on retail commercials on television all the time, right? And what this is what in the adult world we call protective underwear. Underwear that has absorption to it. We don't really call them pull-ups in the adult world. We call them protective underwear. That being said, some of your customers will call it that uh, as well. And last but not least, so pretty, a pad is a pad, yay, a pad is a pad. So when I say brief, I'm talking about this type of product. When I say protective underwear, I'm talking about this type of product. This makes sense to everyone. And I, I don't mean to be, you know, I, I'm just trying to make sure everybody's clear. And when I talk about a pad, this is what I'm talking about. Okay, so what Jim was saying is that there's a method to what trying to make a judgment as to what people need and trying to do that. As you turn your pages, and I'm just going to kind of let my fingers do the walking, there's a couple of sheets that talk about types of incontinence. I don't want you guys to get really sort of too into the specifics on this. This is kind of interesting to know information doesn't necessarily need to be something you have to remember. There are different types of incontinence, but turn the page again. And when you're trying to make a judgment as to who might need a pad, who might need protective underwear, or who might need a brief, there are two things that you're going to want to know from that customer. And there's a grid on the bottom here. But one of those two things, whoops. Those two things are this. Number one, how heavy is their incontinence? Is it heavy? Is it moderate? Do you guys all have one? Everybody's got one? Okay. Is it heavy? Is it moderate? Or is it light? You need one more? Yeah, we've got plenty of booklets, so everybody can do that. Heavy, moderate, light. Make sense? So that's the first thing you want to know. How heavy is their urinary incontinence? What sort of dovetails with that is whether or not there's bowel incontinence. Okay? So how heavy is it? The other thing you want to know is what is their activity level? Is this someone who is basically in bed all the time? Or is this someone who can get out of bed either with or without assistance? Clear so far? Okay. Those are the two things that you're going to want to know. So the reason I bring that up, this is the toilet. <laughs> if I'm someone who can at least get out of bed and get to a toilet, I'm probably going to be a little bit better, hopefully. So if someone, you have someone who is 
being toileted or can do that, their knees might be kind of fairly light or it might be somewhat moderate, okay? If I'm in bed all the time or most of the time or have absolutely no control, <laughs> I'm probably gonna need something for heavier incontinence, right? You're not, you're not yeah. in your head, that's good, okay? So basically what you're talking about with some of the different pads, this is something for light incontinence. And these are bladder control pads. You're going to have a couple of different types on your formulary. These come in different um, absorbencies and different lengths. They typically have sticky on the back. Ladies, you have all seen something like this, okay? <laughs> we do have also uh, bladder control pads for men. And what makes these different they're a completely different shape. They're wide in the front. Why? Just like, just like little ones. Men are incontinent in the front. Women are incontinent in the middle. Right? It's that simple. These also have sticky on the back as well. These types of products are meant to be worn in someone's own underwear, not inside other products. We'll talk about that later. That's why they have the sticky on the back. Okay? With the guys, they have to have regular brief type of underwear, not boxer shorts, not commando, nothing like that. It has to be something you can, some fabric you can stick something to, right? So this goes in their own underwear. Makes sense? DVDs, through the loom, what have you. Okay? That's, the, that's the only product that would actually put instructions on the physical product itself. In blue. Whereas for the ladies, we have pretty. Okay. <laughs> And they say we don't have focus groups, right? <laughs> I was just wondering why you put instructions on the guy's stuff. What are you thinking? <laughs> Actually, I'm glad you brought that up because you made me think of something. <laughs> oh, someone says uh oh. Ladies, this looks like a uh, feminine hygiene product, correct? It is very different, though. What you're going to find. And you can go to any drugstore and you find the, the Kotex type feminine products, right? And then you see things for incontinence. In fact, I believe on some of these, on this packaging, oh, I don't have my glasses on, but they typically say for urinary incontinence or for urinary or something like that. Even though these look very similar to a feminine hygiene product, they are not the same. What is inside is very different, and I'll talk to you a little bit about what, what that is. Because with feminine hygiene products versus urinary, what it's absorbing is very different. Not to get too graphic, but I think we all understand, correct? Okay. So when you have someone whose needs are pretty light, the pads are very, very nice. Make sense? When you have someone whose needs are, are kind of more moderate, and especially if they're up and toileting some, the protective underwear is very nice for that. Um, it's got a nice, uh, you know, circular construction. It's uh, got your size in there, elastic, all that. And then here, you've got an absorbency that's better than the pads. So if there's a little bit of a, somewhat of a bigger void, urinary void, you're going to have that. Okay. These are very nice as long as someone is able to get up and toilet themselves. Okay. So I'm, someone's toileting me, I've got my walker or I'm pivoting to my commode or something like that next to the bed. These are really pretty nice for that. Okay. The reason I say that is if you have someone who's in bed quite a bit, these are kind of cumbersome because they're, they're like underwear. You have to get them all the way down or you have to take their pants off or something like that. Not real good. So if someone has a pretty good activity level and um, moderate need, protective underwear is good for them as well. When it comes to the, what is this again? Brief. Brief. Very good. Thank you. When it comes to the brief, this is something that, that is for heavy need, okay? Someone probably who's in bed quite a bit or really has no control, even if they are toileting. Make sense? So you've got heavy need, 
moderate need and being active, light need. That's pretty much it. Light, moderate, heavy. Makes sense so far? Yes. Okay. So in that grid that's in your, in your book, right here, on the vertical part, it says basically something like, I can't read it. <laughs> Independent, sort of supervision, moderate, just kind of. Yeah, I've got it. Where, oh, here they are. <laughs> I even cleaned them up. How's that? <laughs> Thank you. So it gave it basically gives you three different tiers of independence. Someone who's pretty independent, someone who needs somewhat of assistance, and then someone who's totally dependent. So you could basically break it down to that. On the horizontal part, that's where you've got your urinary flow, light, moderate, heavy, correct? So you can have, you know, there's a little bit of a grid there that can help to choose. But I like to just break it down and make it really pretty easy and keep it to light, moderate, light, moderate, heavy. Does this make sense to everyone? Um, Christine, yes. I, have a, I have a comment. Um, on our prescription right now, we actually have a choice where the physician can, you know, fill that in, the mobility part, um, oh. the heavy, like, so, so I'm assuming then that we would go by the physician's, um, you know, recommendations more than just asking the patient on the phone. I... You know, you're talking two different things. <clears throat> well, I just started to breach this with you all yesterday. Oh. You're in the DM piece of it. So mm -hmm. in, in the disease management piece, when we incorporate the physician into the plan of care, we're trying to correlate what the physician thinks and what the patient thinks, and that's part of that education process we do mm -hmm. with them. Mm -hmm. So when we send out that prescription, um, I think what, we, what I learned yesterday, and you correct me if I'm wrong, is we may find there's a big void between what the doc thinks and what the patient's using. There's also a lack of understanding in what the doc is is thinking is working and what is actually should be working with the patient, and that's going to get into sizing. This is a little I learned yesterday. It's it's quite a bit different than what I had thought, and so um, in our prescription process, as we do this, you don't have a, a hold on that. I'm not sure clinically. Do we have a hold on shipping if the doc does not complete that piece? No. Okay, so it will still continue through. Then case management will work in getting the plan together. I think as we go forward, uh, what Christine taught me yesterday, if you're incontinent, and actually I, this was a real uh, eye-opener for me. If you're incontinent, I would think you'd want the biggest diaper you could possibly get, right? Because you don't want to leak and you don't, uh, that may be the worst thing for you. That may not work at all in the way you think it's going to. One of the things we always focus on this com in the company here is getting people back into a normal lifestyle. Somehow getting them back to the bridge game. Somehow, you know, that, that's the whole respiratory focus is getting them re-engaged. Um, what, what has been my experience with incontinence is if you're incontinent, it's a very embarrassing thing. If you were to leak in public somehow, some way, it's a very embarrassing thing. People have experienced this in all different levels. So you have a psychosocial piece of this. And so if we can get them in the right, fitted in the right product, fitted in the right size, then uh, we can continue to encourage them to re-enter. We have education pieces we're going to be working together on. We can get them encouraged to get back into bridge, get back into your knitting, get back into doing what you do. And so I think in doing this, we may find out more from the patient than the doc knows. Um, okay. That, That's exactly yeah. correct. Yeah. So I think there'll be there'll be a learning curve on our side, and there'll be and I'm not sure the doc's ever going to get it because I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. So when we turn around and give this back as part of the plan of care, we may be actually educating him or her what is best for this patient based on the input we get. So I don't, um, 
we don't have IT in here, Dave. I don't know how the notes are going to work on this. So the electronic note process, because the case managers in the plan are going to want to see this. I'm not quite sure on this piece. So I'm going to need a little help in trying to understand this. Uh, I know, Chris, you don't write that, but um, we're going to need probably a collaborative on this piece to try and get the information back to the doc. And I know as we, you know, as soon as we open up the next gen units in here, then it'll actually be live in their office. So there's going to be there'll be a learning curve as we do this. So um, I agree, and I think one of the reasons for that is that incontinence is, I mean, urinating and and everything else is something everybody does, and so sometimes the the incontinence part of it is seem is seemingly oversimplified like how much you know i mean people kind of can't some some of my friends can't believe i even have a job in it and i don't want to say that it's any kind of rocket science but it's not these decisions are not unconscious these decisions are based on some activity levels light moderate heavy these decisions are based on what is going on with that patient therefore it needs to be someone who can at least take a minute and talk to them about what they're experiencing and um, good or bad, right or wrong, a lot of that comes to you. So what you're saying is very true, is that physician may just put on continent products or something like that and then just, this is where you go, and then you talk to someone there. And that's why it's important for you to be talking to the patients. And I know that you talk to them a lot as well. If you're talking to them about ostomy supplies, if you're talking to them about urologicals, you guys already, you're, you're a light year ahead of everybody else. So you already know how to talk to folks. This isn't going to be any different. I'd like to think maybe it's a little bit less complicated in a way, but not unconscious. So what we want to do, does everybody, uh, did everybody get their decision tree? So what this basically boils down to is you've got light, moderate, and heavy for urinary, correct? Everyone sees that? And then you've got for BM, for bowel movement, anytime by the way, when you have, when there's bowel incontinence, the brief, if there's a lot of bowel incontinence, the brief is going to be the only answer. Why? Because any of the products anywhere, it doesn't matter who, matter who manufactures them, they are made to absorb urine. They are not made to absorb or do anything with bowel, even if it's liquidy. So the name of that game is collection. You just want to collect it and keep it inside so it's not all over the place. So that's why in your decision tree, it says BM, it takes you right to a brief and you're done. Okay? It's the urinary, that's where you've got a little bit more of your choices to help steer people towards the right thing. So when you have light, you're, start, you're talking about some of the pads. When you've got moderate, you can go to brief or some of the protective underwear. And heavy, you definitely need to go to a brief. Make sense? Sometimes when you look at a decision tree, you're like, woo, you know, what's all these squares? But it's actually not too hard. So what's in some of this stuff? I mean, what you know, what, what is this product actually doing? A lot of people think that from back in the day, you want something big and thick, bigger the thicker and the wider the better, right? Yeah. Right. But um, some of you are pretty young. Some of you who are a little bit older kind of remember some of the old baby diapers, how really big and thick they used to be, and they're really thin now. Same with the adult stuff. What is actually absorbing inside all these, these products is not the fluff. It's actually a, a, a substance called polymer. In the dry form, it is nothing but a powder. It kind of looks like sugar. This actually is a small bladder control pad. Now, if you're going to say something's bigger, thicker, better, you wouldn't think this would hold more than about five drops, I don't think. But we're going to put it in some water. Don't tell Minotola that. Yeah. It's, a, it's a cardinal sin at, at first quality to put something in simply water because nobody urinates water, right? Mm -hmm. But I'm going to kind of put it in here and give it a minute to absorb. This isn't even warm, so I'm kind of making it. I want to be able to outline what this is going to look like when it absorbs urine. But uh, what happens is, how many of you guys have babies, like in the past few years, or babies sat? Oh, not too many. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
or have taken a kid and, and put them in a swimming pool and all of a sudden their diaper just like swells to 100 times. It's, that's what that is. It's that heavy gel. That's what's actually absorbing. So that's what it's going to do with urine. The other nice thing about that is what, what causes odor in urine? Anybody know? Ammonia. Yes, very good. Who said that? Somebody, that's very good. Ammonia is actually in the urine. When the urine comes out of the body, it takes hydrogen from the room air. Because you know, room air is only what, 28% oxygen? Is that what 21. it is? 21, thanks. I knew you'd know. And there's a lot of other uh, you know, gases, if you will, in, in room air. Takes a hydrogen ion out of room air and goes from NH3 to NH4 and makes ammonia, and that's what makes the smell. What polymer, what the powder also does, besides uh, absorb, is to help take that odor out and not allow that, that hydrogen ion to connect and not form ammonia. Make sense? So you guys all had a chemistry lesson today. Remember that little, uh, oh no, these have an adhesive. I did it the wrong way. <laughs> They have it, this has an adhesive back to it. See if you can unstick this. Sorry about that. That's what I get for talking and doing something at the same time. Oh, we did it. Good. So remember how thick, how thin that little thing was? See what it looks like now? And it probably absorbed, I'd say an ounce and a half. I'll pass this around. It's a little bit wet still. But just handle it, don't break it, because all of your gel is going to fall out. That's what's in all these products. If something that thin can absorb about an ounce and a half, think of what all of these things will do. That's what's in these products. You know, and when you're on the phone with customers, there's a move towards thinner technology. Of course, Paul has really led that move in thinner technology out there in the market. Um, if you think about other types of categories or industries that have seen that same type of revolution, which is moving from bigger to thinner, the TV market is one that has replicated very well. You think about 50 inch TV 10 years ago, I mean, it was like a bookshelf, right? I mean, it, it took up half your living room. It was huge. The picture wasn't all that great. There's a little grainy in the corners kind of deal. Same thing in this type of category where you've seen the products move from thicker to thinner technology. They absorb better. They're faster absorbing in the product themselves because there's more room for the product to absorb. So it's just a, a, a natural progression of this industry to move towards thinner technology. Uh, which is better performing for the patients and for the dignity of the life for the patient. If they want to get out back to the bridge games, that big bulky product, especially with the plastic side out of here, kind of whoosh, 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 with the walk in, you're not going to get that with this product because it's a non woven material on the outside. Um, so really, we really want to promote you know patients to get back to their active daily lives, as Jim mentioned, and, and our products help do that for sure. It's drying up a little bit. It's not dripping or anything. No, no, it shouldn't drip. Well, some manufacturers actually used a recycled uh, super absorbent polymer. And with our company, we're buying the highest grade of super absorbent polymer that we're putting in our products that allows it to really lock that product up. So, um, you know, again, that's really a commitment for first quality from the products that we manufacture. So, what happens is when that polymer absorbs, it takes, it's, it's in all of the products, the protective underwear, the pads, the briefs, everything. It's going to, it's going to pull that, that urine, that liquid away. And then what happens is it locks it up. And then this top sheet, what's actually next to the patient, stays dry. This is why we all use um, disposable products now. Not, because, not necessarily because it's convenient, although it is. It's really because it's much better for their skin. If I was to dump that, that same cup of water on a, uh, a sheet or a what they call a reusable um, under pad that's, that's cotton or whatever, what do you think that's going to do? It's just going to stay wet and you're going to sit in wetness. So it's, anytime I have someone tell me, well, we, we don't put products on people at night or something like that, it's fingernails on the blackboard for me. Because you know what, I'll dump a cup of water into my brief, give it a minute to soak in, and I'll sit there. <coughs> and I'd like to dump it into theirs into their, their cotton reusable wet under pad and have them sit on it. I guarantee you they don't sit. They don't do that. But the, but the chemistry behind it, polymer absorbs it in, top sheet stays dry. Make sense? Okay. Cool. 
Um, I kind of like to just sort of go through the formulary with you. Those three tiers, the product recommendation one, product recommendation two, and product recommendation three. And then I'll come back to some of the other things about that. Yes. Uh, product recommendation one. I thought Matt said he was going to um, model these very good. Yes, <laughs> each individual style and size. There's a reason why I always order in because I'll never. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> I saw that. 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 So the way your formulary is set up is, is the, 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 the product recommendation one is going to be the most encompassing category of products. So it's going to have everything from your youth products to your briefs to your protective underwear. Everything that's in there that you need primarily should be able to manage the majority of the patients that you're working with. So the way you set up this on here kind of follows this too. So you have your bladder control pads, which are listed here. You have your protective underwear. We have our briefs. Then we have our specialty briefs. And what specialty briefs are is the youth, the small, the dumb much large, and the bariatric. Uh, then we get into the, the kids' products, which are our wonder pants and our sleepovers, uh, which we have two different styles of sleepovers, which we'll go through. Uh, our cuties baby diapers, uh, which we make from newborn to size six. Um, so anybody that has children, please let us know. We're more than happy to uh, sprinkle those around. Uh, and then we also have uh, our, our, our underpads that are available because some customers may, uh, may use or may need underpads. Um, so probably what we could do is just pass around these products to you guys so you can touch them, feel them, look at them, and we'll go through kind of the, the features and benefits of each product. Um, in your catalog, so you have the order guide here. This order guide also follows your catalog. So as you go to the tab that says adult uh, pediatric product information, you have a catalog that's listed here. And this is designed specifically for you guys. So in this catalog here that you have, if there's things you want us to add as we go through this, we can certainly do that. We'd love to get the customer feedback from you all. Um, but this is designed, um, I've done customer service, so it's Christine, we've been on the phone with customers. At the end of the day, what you're gonna find with this is that if somebody calls in and they're getting a bladder control pack for first quality, and let's say, uh, this is the first time they've received it. I want you to be able to have something in your hand that's tangible that you can grab, that you can answer questions for customers. So when they call in and they've received the bladder control pad from you, you want to talk about some of the features and benefits of that product. You can tell them the product has odor guard and it has quick wick, and you can tell them a little bit about the design of the product. So the picture of the product's listed here, the features and benefits, the bag is listed up here. Um, a little bit about thinner technology is listed too. So if somebody asks you, well, this is really thin, you know, here's some quick um, thoughts regarding uh, thinner technology and why thinner is better. Um, and then down below, you've got all your ordering information. Uh, well, before I skip to that point, what are the appropriate types of incontinence for this? There are six different types of incontinence, and we'll talk a little bit about that. But you know, you have stress, urge, overflow, and mixed. So for somebody that has those types of incontinence, the bladder control pads would work for those people. And then you've got in the ordering information, you have the first quality ordering number, you have the ordering number for dependents, you've got your your product recommendation. So this ties back to your order guide. So when you're looking at your catalog, you don't have to guess, well, is that product recommendation two or is it one? Where does it fit in? It's listed here. The description of the actual product, what color the product itself is, what the pad length is, and then what the case quantities are. Um, and again, we do have the made in the USA because all of our products are made in the United States listed in there. So we want to continue to remind you that. Um, so that's kind of the outline of the catalog. And that'll flow from the beginning of your order guide here, which is, which is uh, the bladder control pads in the light incontinence and then you're going to move into another uh, bladder control pad, which would be the male guard, which we have here. So let's just stop right here. Let's pass around some of the, the bladder control pads for you guys to look at and then can touch and feel, and, uh, and we'll go from there. So why don't you take those on that side, and I'll take these on this side. Well, these are the little bitty ones. Yep. <laughs> so one of the values of first quality um, is the fact that we are a manufacturer that manufactures product for multiple channels. So we don't just manufacture product for long-term care, we don't just manufacture product for home care, we also do product for retail. So what you're gonna find in the retail world is this nice uh, non-woven packaging on the outside. Some manufacturers uh, will make product that's all white. I don't think those little skinny ones are gonna be on your formulary. I hooked up a number of nurses with this. But what you have is you'll have on your formulary, um, let me see, a nurse board says bladder control pads, 
So it has just some, some different ones that you will have access to. A little bit, maybe a little bit bigger, uh, a little bit more absorbency. But remember that when you're using ladder control pads, those are for fairly light needs. And um, especially sometimes a little bit of dribbling. So that's what you'll be using those for. So how would we think about uh, moderate, moderate, long, moderate, max, long, jumbo, and ultimate? When do you use which? Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Um, it's, a lot, it's a lot of different line items. Yeah, a lot of different samples will actually identify what kind of parts you're using already and try to get them all to the spectrum of sampling and see which ones are the best. Can we cover that piece later that's part of the decision tree? Because that could be exactly the same. One of the things I wanted to bring up is um, um, I want to stay away from mentioning uh, plan names today, so we're going to stay away from names. But in the we're in the process of doing a very large conversion, uh, you all are involved in it. In that conversion process, we're going to have we're going to come against five different manufacturers that may manufacture under ten different names. Okay, so you're going to get um, depends. You're going to get attends. You're going to get you know, I'm using this, I'm using that. Sorry about that. Just tell me, Chris. Um, and so when you're doing that, we're going to be we're going to be using um, first quality exclusively. Okay, everybody needs to know that. This uh, we're going to be partnering with them going forward in all states. So uh, you know, we're testing a couple right now, walking before we run. But as we start to convert to these, some folks are going to be on. Um, in the um, research of data, we're seeing two things occurring right now before we start to take the transition on. Product loading is occurring, and um, Rolls Royces are being given out. Okay, so it's it's not your Chevy product. We're, we're uh, distributing Rolls Royces out there right now. So we're going to be transitioning them, transitioning them from Brand X to this company. In that process, this is why in the decision tree and what Christine's been covering, you have different levels to go to. There will be points in time when you're going to need to um, pull a rabbit out of your hat, so to speak. And they might be on something different, and we'll actually have a sample program that will be able to send samples of another product to them to see if that will better fit the need. What we want to stay on to protect, uh, you know, we, we do contracts, and our contracts are at a certain rate. In order to protect that rate, we have a formulary, and she's been referring to that, and so as Matt as we've been talking. We want to stay in that formulary, but occasionally you're going to have to um, provide a different answer, and so we have different products that you can go out and sample. I think there's two to a sample for them to try and see if that better fits the need for where we need to go. So whatever they're on, what I really like about this process, they're teaching you how to, how to inquire, uh, Fact gather and make decision based on that using this product, regardless of what they're using. Does that make sense to everybody? So you're actually having so many different pieces you can pull together for them based on the fact gathering that you do by the decision tree that you follow, that you'll actually be able to move them into the product that will be equal to or better than brand X, whatever brand X is called. So that's kind of where we're, we're moving this whole piece. And um, and so I want to, as you come up, as we start to convert these patients, um, y'all remember when we've done large state conversions, diabetics, uh, we get beat up. You know, it's like, oh, I've been using one touch for forever, and it just, you know, it walks on water, and and then they get uh, one of the other units that we have in our formula, and they go, wow, this is faster than what we were using, and it's easier, and it takes less blood, and we're going to find that similar pushback as we start moving into this. Um, but I want to kind of uh, rest assure all of you that the product is either equal to or better than what they are currently using. And so what, what we'll need to do is, in, in those rare cases, the one or two percents where it's just not making sense to that patient, we'll have a sample program. So we'll be able to test out and move, move to a different product that might better handle them 
if they're outside of the formula. Does that make sense? Anyway, that's I just wanted to cover that as we're going. So I want to make sure that we get everything covered. So we'll pass around some of the other um, products um, after we get. I kind of want to go out to the kind of finish with the um, finish with the product selection piece. Because remember, we're gonna we're gonna want to know a little bit about their activity levels. This person out out of bed and, and going to the bathroom or going to the toilet. These are this is something very simple that's very, I think, easy that to ask patients or their caregivers. You know, does this person go to the bathroom? Does this person do that? The other piece of it that is going to be very very important in the performance of any product is putting them into the right size. So in your tab. Uh, the third tab, which is little pediatric product information, a couple of pages, about three or four pages in, about six pages in, you see something that looks like a height weight chart. And it looks like a height weight chart because actually it is a height weight chart. Now, if you're looking at three, I like to put one on that's a little bit big for me. <laughs> but is everybody at their height weight chart? Okay. Why do you think that it's important for these to be the, the correct size? Anybody have a? So they don't leak. That's right. Number one answer. The height weight chart is going to be a very, very good tool for you when you're trying to determine, help them determine the correct size. You have a height in inches on the left-hand side. If you guys need a uh, um, conversion chart, we can provide you those. I'm five foot four almost, and that, and I know that I'm 64 inches tall, so I can find my height right here. And then this is like buying pantyhose, buying underwear. You guys ever used a height weight chart to buy clothing, like online or something? You go over, you go up, that's pretty much where you're going to be, OK? Now, you're going to find that some, uh, some uh, patients are have been used to using a certain size. It is a good idea to try and determine from them whether that size is correct. And why do you think they might be using a size that's maybe not right? Anybody have an idea? They don't, know. they don't know. And they think that a bigger size is going to absorb more. <clears throat> but I can tell you, the same amount of polymer is in all of the different sizes. So what does that mean? Polymers, that powder that absorbs. If they all of the sizes have the same amount of polymer, that means that they're all going to absorb the same amount. Now, this is a medium. This pretty much fits me. I'd say. Looking good, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Do we have any larges? Well, I'm going to bring this one. Which one? Oh. 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 <laughs> so that's the medium. And this is our bariatric brand. Yeah. And the cores are exactly the same, right? From here to here, you've got the same core that's been designed. It's the exterior of the product that's designed to fit the actual patient themselves. Mm -hmm. So when somebody says, hey, that double extra arch brief provides me more absorbency, that it's inaccurate. What provides more dormancy is making sure, like your own underwear, that the product is up close and personal to your body so that when you do have a void, when you do have an accident, uh, the product performs the way it's designed to perform, which is to rapidly and very quickly absorb fluid. And there's no products in the industry that absorb fluid faster than, than first qualities. Uh, the design of our products, as well as the super absorbent polymer that we use in our products, is by far the best in the industry. And that's really, our rate of acquisition has always been uh, kind of our, our, our <laughs> flagship in, in, in the business. So I brought that out just to show you the different sizes. And this yep. is this is the one of the largest briefs in the industry that we manufacture. Aren't you going to wear it? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I knew it was coming. I thought Jim was going to put you out. <laughs> I was trying to behave myself. Uh, yeah. Actually, if, day, if you haven't worked for this company and put a brief on, you probably haven't been christened, right? Uh, just make sure it doesn't catch my tie. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Is first quality 
Quality the only company that has products made in America? No, there are other manufacturers that make product in the U.S. for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of stuff is made overseas too. Yeah. So see, we can see how difficult it might be to actually even put one on. On one that large, it would be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. However, what and you're it's going too to big. Right. Right. And what's this your... product is too big. Thank goodness I'm not bariatric. <laughs> there you go. But this is the whole. This is the whole thing. Like, <laughs> I want to wrap it around me three or four times. So that, oh, here we go with the phone. <laughs> <laughs> so this is yeah. this is a non-proper <laughs> fitting brief, right? But this is what you'll find is that hey, if I can wrap it around me three or four times, it's going to provide more absorbency. The reality is, it's not. <laughs> But seriously, what? So when you have when you have a brief or the protective under when, when they're too big for someone, what do you think happens? They're gonna leak. Yeah. So you know I, why? Too much around. Yeah. yeah. Right. What happens is if it's if it's too big or too loosely fitting. So if I put my tabs way out here, it comes away from the body, right? And when it comes away from the body, that's when you have more of a propensity to leak. Make sense? Yeah. The other thing that happens is it can move around a lot. Now, what do you think happens when it moves around? It shakes. So if you ever, if you ever, if they say, oh, he's got redness or she's got redness inside her leg, one of the things, the first thing that, that I think of is either the brief is too big or it's not properly fitting. Yes? Not also be if it's too small, and maybe if it's too tight, if it's too bad, or, I mean, what about, like, really sensitive people with really sensitive skin, like has a lot of regenerate. So I mean, how would we address that as far as a size issue or maybe a material to skin issue? That's a very good, that's a very good point. Let me, let me answer that with, with other types of skin and, and that kind of thing. Um, first of all, you can take your <laughs> You can debrief. You can debrief. <laughs> you know, there's, this, this is a fun business. Though. I tell everybody I'm in waste containment. Right? <laughs> as, a, as a trainer, I put a brief on like practically every day outside my clothing. Yeah. But um, people, it's a, it just people kind of chuckle and laugh, and to me, it's a daily occurrence. One of the thing about briefs that are too small. I can tell you that it's it's it'll be quite uncommon for you to hear about that. And the reason that is is become when, because when briefs are too small, it's really pretty obvious to people. I mean, the front and the back barely meet, okay? So it's very obvious to people, but when briefs are too big, they feel like they can snug it up, right? And if it doesn't fit, they can just make it fit. So it is much more likely that you're gonna find if someone's not in the right size, that that brief is too big, not that it's too small. However, you, you make a good point. Whenever you have tightness here, um, it, it can be, you know, certainly cause that. But at the end, of, but also on the other side of the coin, when something is too, and I see this all the time, when something is too big and it rubs and rubs and rubs, especially on someone who has kind of um, skin that's uh, a bit more friable, if you will, it, it can cause redness. And this is where you see it. So do you have like a hypoallergenic sensitive one or one that comes with aloe or anything like that? Very funny you should say that. They all do. Oh, really? Yeah, okay. they're, they are hypoallergenic. Now, that being said, anyone, anywhere, there's always a, a possibility of being allergic to everything, right? I mean, somebody out there, it's probably one in, I don't even know what the statistic is, in many. If you find someone who says, I'm allergic to this, how do you think that's going to, to uh, what do you think it's going to look like? If someone has a true allergy, everywhere the brief touches will be red. Here, 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 everywhere. Make sense? Because if there's something in that brief that is causing a sensitivity, it's going to be everywhere. But if it's only in certain places, that's not an allergic reaction. People will call it that. I'm glad you brought that up because these are some of, you know, we're, we were trying to kind of brainstorm some issues of some things that you'll hear. So there's a difference between recommending to go to the doctor or recommending different tests. Yeah, right. and, and one of the ways that this program is designed is that you do have a formulary product, and that formulary is designed to meet the needs of the majority of the customers. But in your situation where you have something that 
maybe it specifically has a specific issue. We do have other levels of product. We make seven different levels of briefs. We make five different levels of protective armor. We make about 400 items in total uh, across the board. So first quality makes everything that you need to meet the needs of your common patients from A to Z. Uh, your formulary represents you know 95 to 100% of that for most of your patients for sure. Yeah. So we've kind of gone over, and that what I really wanted you, to, you guys to grasp is helping people to select the correct product. You've got light, you've got moderate, you've got heavy urinary need. If there's bowel incontinence, they really need to go right to a brief because it's all about collecting, right? They will need to be in the right size, both with the protective underwear or with the brief because both of them are sized. And in your uh, books, there's a height weight chart for each. I'm not sure that they're all that different, but there's a height weight chart for each. A yeah. Um, so those are really, the, those when you're choosing the product, that's what you're going to want to know. One more thing I do want to add as far as the need, the heaviest of the need, <coughs> it is perfectly appropriate and somewhat common for people to have a different need during the day than they do at night. And one of the reasons that is, is because during the day, they're, they have a caregiver maybe, or the caregiver's awake, <laughs> people are up and about, and they're more likely to be transferred to the toilet. If they need help doing that, they're more likely to get it. At night, they may or may not, okay? So some people's needs, may be somewhat moderate or even light during the day, and they're toileting during the day, and then at night, their need might be heavy because there's either no one to take them to the bathroom or they sleep hard all night, and they would need to be something in, with, for heavy absorbency. Does that make sense to everyone? So it's perfectly appropriate for that. Okay, light, moderate, heavy, how much activity, put them in the right size. And we're going to go, we're going to finish with products. I want to make sure that we get through all the other nuts and bolts first before we do that. So you guys are, are uh, you're used to talking with patients, either they're calling themselves or they have a caregiver or a daughter or for kids, they have a parent, something like that. So there's certain things that they're going to be used to that um, you're going to kind of want to know. I know that I think a lot of these, these patients are going to be new. They've been getting their products from someplace else. Um, they've probably been um, in a fee, uh, probably a fee for service type environment where there's a quantity, um, allowed quantity of things. Mike, are you guys come with me so far? I'm not really sure what all you guys are, are doing. Some of those quantities are in different states, and I think you're gonna be going with different states. They can be very different. Some of them are extremely generous, 300 a month or 250 a month or, or something like that. They're all a little bit different, okay? They also may be used to be able to be getting a lot of different things regardless of what their need is. So what we're, what we're really the proponent is, is to really talk to them about what they're actually using, okay? If you have someone, and you're, you're going to find this, I guarantee you, you're going to find someone whose, lead, who, whose uh, needs are really fairly light, and this is what they've been in. I mean, is that really right? Not really, no. And uh, probably there's going to be one of two different reactions you'll get from that. Some people say, you mean I don't have to have that big thing? I mean, how great is that, right? Or they're going to say, I need this. Right. So I just I'm trying to kind of figure, you know, kind of go through in my mind what kinds of things, appropriate things, crazy things that some folks are doing at home because no one ever told them any differently, and they may be very glad that they can do something um, uh, uh, appropriate. One of the things I can almost guarantee that you're going to find is you're going to find people who. So I got to put product on again. Oh, good, it's a medium. <laughs> I was going to say, I, I don't think a small is going to cut it for me with my clothes on. You're going to find some people who are in protective underwear. This isn't a very good one. And then they take a pad, 
and they put this in like that. Okay. So when someone says, oh, I need protective underwear and I need some pads and I, you know, I need this or I need that, ask them how they're using it. Okay. Because I can, I can almost guarantee you, this is my number one pet peeve, is they're putting these pads in type inside the underwear. Okay. That is not, it's not the right thing. And I'll tell you guys why. <laughs> this is so dry now. Did everybody touch this? Mm -hmm. Touch it again. Because I want you guys to have a really good understanding of what polymer does. That thing is bone dry, which is the whole point. When you've got people who are wearing protective underwear, they sometimes put a pad inside that. Why are they doing that? They think they're going to cover more. That's right. They think they're going to get more protection. They think, well, this is kind of moderate, right? <laughs> Protective underwear is for moderate. So, you know, boy, I'm going out. I'm going to be uh, all afternoon. I better put a pad in here. Okay. Back in the day, and I, I don't even want to tell you how long I've been in this industry. It's embarrassing. We used to, I don't think first quality did, but manufacturers used to make something called a booster pad. And anyone who's my age, they even had them for little kids back in the day. Booster pads have no um, poly barrier film or anything to really make sure that, that urine doesn't go through. They were actually made to have urine go through and then be caught onto something else. But that was a long time ago. And you know why we don't do that anymore? Because 10 years ago or longer, briefs were not as well made and absorbent. Protective underwear was, I don't even, was barely even around. We used to have the belted underwear. The pads weren't as absorbent. Polymer was, um, I don't know, I don't even know if it was even around. It might, have, it might have been brand new, but you had the big, thick things. Today, we don't use these inside. You know why? Because every product has a small polyethylene barrier inside it to make sure that if it gets really saturated for whatever reason, that it doesn't go out and onto the clothing. It's in the pads. It's in the briefs. It's in the protective underwear. So what does that mean when you have this in here? It means that, where's my phone? You're yeah. actually blocking it, aren't you? Mm -hmm. Yes, I am. So essentially that bladder control pad that we passed around when it's full, that only holds so many cc's, like an ounce and a half or two ounces of fluid. And once that fills up, it covers the core of the other product. And then once the fluid hits that product and it's full, it then pulls over the sides and doesn't even absorb into the actual core of the other product, which is designed to hold, you know, six to seven ounces of fluid. So we're trying to make them do ground, so it's actually making it harder. Exactly. They're not generating it. Exactly right. Yep. You've got a poly you've got a poly barrier here. This is just about this is about as wide as the protective underwear, right? When this becomes really saturated with urine, it's not going to go through, is it? Where do you think it goes? Yes, yeah, so it comes out the side, pretty much misses whatever the, the protective underwear or even the brief. And then where's, when is it, where does it go? It goes on their clothing. If you've ever seen people double pad and they're wet anyway, that's why. The only thing that is going to absorb is what is next to them. Nothing else will absorb. When you have this in here, what do you have? This is it. This is all you have. This is all you need. You might as well have underwear, your own underwear. So double padding is never correct. It's one of the constants in life. Death, taxes, and do not double pad. Okay? It's one of the things that's never going to go away. But that being said, I can, I can almost guarantee you, I'll bet somebody lunch, if you go several weeks and no one wants to do that, We'll have to cater a lunch or something. We'll have to have a pizza party. That's a movie proposition, I assure you. <laughs> See, no one's like, <laughs> Jim doesn't even want to bet me. <laughs> so double padding is never correct. The other thing that happens, ladies, you're just going to go, ooh, and see this. When they take that pad out, I shouldn't have taken the underwear off. Pretend I have it on. When they take that pad out, what do they do? Right? What do I just do? Yeah, well, I touched it, but you know what? It's like wiping from back to front. And I know that, you know, it's a little 
funny and a little uncouth to be talking about that kind of things, but what would that do? That can cause a urinary tract infection. And when you're talking about someone who's, whose condition is at risk for any reason, any kind of infection, and urinary tract infection is between that and pneumonia are the two most common, you don't want to, to you know, start doing something that's going to do that. So it is never, never appropriate for that. Okay. The reason I'm telling you this is when you're talking to some of these patients who call, I want you guys to understand the science behind it. Okay. When they double pad, it's not going to go through onto the pull up, on the underwear, protective underwear. Sorry. See, even I do it. I know. Did I beat that into everybody? Just, just one of my things. So that's one of the things that you're going to see. Another thing you're going to see, and again, is the sizing issue. You're going to have somebody who's my size who wants a large. Okay. Good idea to just, well, you know, let's just, we've got a new brand. We, we've got some different brands here. Let me, let's, what's your, you know, do you know your height and weight? You know, do you know that? And they should know. And just, and take your height, weight chart and really determine if they're in the right size. Mm -hmm. Because if they're not, if they're in a size that's too big, it's not, it's not going to absorb quite as well. Also, like Jim said, you're going to have some people who are um, going to be using first quality products for the first time. They maybe have been in a product from a different manufacturer. And just like, you know, uh, Campbell's soup and Progresso soup are different soups. They're both soup, but they're different, right? First quality is going to be a little bit different from some of the other manufacturers. So having, having the height and weight and making sure they're in the right size is very important. Um, I have a whole bunch of those on the top of my head that I want to go through as far as oh, people calling me. Yeah. Another thing is um, when we start talking about Troubleshooting. Where's that medium one? Here we go. You've, you've sent your products out. You think everything's correct. They call in and they say, oh, I got this problem. Okay. Maybe they're having leakage. Maybe they're having skin problems. One of the things about application, an application, I believe, is on the back of every package. It's in picture form, so we don't have to worry about any languages. And I wish I had one that was a little bit bigger that I could show you. I'm having so much trouble. There we go. One thing about application, you know, anyone who has kids, this isn't really too far off the, the mark for, for little ones either. This product needs to be all the way up, not down here. You know, not like sweats that are too big or, you know, whatever you guys got down here in California. I don't know. <laughs> Want to be all the way up, right? Not around, your, not around your knees or anything like that. How can you tell, even by talking to someone, if you're not actually looking at them, and I know you're not looking at them, how would you know if a brief was too big? How would you be able to ask that? Anybody have an idea? What the best way I think to do that is with these with these adhering strips. And by the way, these are kind of a refastenable. People will ask you that as well. Are they sticky tabs? No, they're not sticky tape tabs. They are like what well, we call them easy lock fasteners because Velcro is a trademark name or something. But people, you know, get what that means. So obviously, you're going to be able to put them on, take them off, put them on, take them off. They're going to stick more times you ever need to. Yes. Yes, very good. When you have these panels adhering towards the center, that brief is too big. So when they say, oh, it's, you know, you know it, it's leaking, it's this, it's, you know, it's, it's sky <laughs> I've logged a few million phone hours, I think, or seemingly. Just say, you know when, you know when you attach them in the front? Where do they attach? Who in the middle? Mm -hmm. It's too big. Okay, right? These, I'm pretty pleased that I'm kind of, I'm fitting pretty good in the medium. It's a good day. <laughs> These should really be, be right in here or, or out here. Okay, 
Now, obviously, again, if something's too small and you're right on the edge, you really can go to a bigger one, right? But if you're hearing these briefs in the middle, anywhere near each other, it's too big. Make sense? So when you start to troubleshoot and people call in and they say, this brief is leaking, that's one of the things you want to ask them. Make sure you have the proper height and weight on them and ask them where they're adhering this. Okay? Maybe they didn't quite, maybe they gave you an old weight. Maybe, you know, something else. Yeah. I don't know if that's out, but are all the sizes pretty much equivalent to the same as their brand they're using now? So are they running, are they running a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller? They, the bigger sizes actually may, I think, run a little bit bigger, don't you think, Matt? I'm sorry, I missed that. Oh, the sizes. They, they may not be exactly the same, and I don't, like, I don't like to make assumptions. Also, one of the things that also happens is on the height weight chart, you're, you're going to find people who are right on the line. It's going to happen. Trust me. I had another lunch on that. You're going to find people who land on the line. So you can find out what size they're wearing now. You can, you know, I mean, you can kind of troubleshoot that the way you like. But, but ask them where that, you know, really where that's adhering. And sometimes you're going to have to send them a sample of something else maybe with it. I think that's what I would do. If, it, if the size thing was really, I thought, going to be an issue, you can sample them two sizes. Or send them one size and sample them another size. Because the height weight chart is really great, but it's not perfect. If you have someone who lands on the, uh, lands on the line, you're going to have some people who have all their weight right here. And they're going to need a bigger size. You're going to have someone with all their weight back here. And they're going to probably be in the smaller one. So what is the returns policy on when you open a bag, that's kind of it? I would say so. Yeah. Once yeah. it goes into the home, once mm -hmm. it goes into a home, it's like any product, medical product that ends up in the home, we can't take it back. But, you know, we're, we're, we're very good at uh, getting samples to customers. So if they've got a case that they got and there's a problem, uh, you know, we can replace the case with another product that does work, uh, those kind of things. So you just need to work with us to let us know where those incidents are and how we can work with you. Well, if it's a product that doesn't work, we can't return it. Yeah, even if it, even if it is close. Because it's in the patient's home. Once it's in the patient's home, it's really their property. So uh, we can't put it back in the inventory at the same time. There may be other infectious reasons that are going on in the house that we're not aware of that we just we wouldn't want to send that to somebody else's house. So is that the, your usual procedure with like ostomy and things? Well, it's different. I mean, we have we have them in boxes and they're sealed. But you're right; these are in bags. I mean, any little tear or something on the outside of it, I could understand. So we do have a, a extended unopened. Yeah. Unopened. As long as the boxes aren't open, yeah, they can be returned. And I. Yeah, I don't know. I think that could be really up to you I as think long as they're what, open. Yeah. What I would think is that um, this should be the exception to the rule. If we're doing the proper um, fact gathering in the beginning, I think we'll probably minimize that to, to a very small amount. Um, you know, um, Mike has always worked with us on a, do a dozen different levels, especially during a rollout, should something occur. I, I really honestly think that would be the exception to the rule. Uh, Mike Lending. So, you know, I'll speak to him about it, but I would think that um, if we're doing the proper fact gathering up front, I think we're probably going to have that as, that'll probably be a one or two percent, 98 percent will flow on through and, and uh, we'll get them the right size and right type. It's probably not too different from ostomy, mm -hmm. especially when an ostomy is new and just like, and, and um, they, they, they're covering a stoma. Especially after surgery, what happens? It shrinks, right? And then eventually it stops, and that's probably going to be their size. So it wouldn't be too different. Yes? Is it possible to occasionally send a single sample to a patient? Yes. 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 We, we, have, we have two packs in A sample in policy. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. mm -hmm. I think there's two uh, gens that will be going out to these patients. So if you're on the firing line there and they're getting a hold of you, we'll be able to get them out uh, a sample. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely, and we want and and we we want you to use that. So please don't hesitate. We want everyone in the correct size as soon as and quick as and as quickly as we can. And that's in in, in all honesty, in my experience in dealing with patients, you may go through 
four or five different products in, within your formulary to get to that right product for that patient. And, and, and that's that's an extreme situation for sure. And that's happened to me a couple of times. But I'll tell you, once you get that right product for that customer and their life has been changed by the product that they're using, it's impactful. And they, they, they continue to use that product. So um, we, we try to be liberal with the, the policy regarding samples to make sure that we get product for the patient that meets their needs, that's the right product for them. Um, and, and, and that's that's the, that's a really good way to, to ensure patients are in the right product, mm -hmm. especially if they're in between sizes. You know, if they're not quite a small, not quite a medium, you know, send them a sample of the small and medium and see which one works best. To Christine's point, there, there may be different sizes for you on how it's fit. Mm -hmm. Probably leakage is going to be the number one complaint that you hear. Not that I think you're going to hear it that much, but that's these are just the things to go about troubleshooting um, when, <coughs> when doing that. If they're wearing a brief, you want to go with size. If you, if you have someone who is in protective underwear and they're leaking, besides the size, ask them about their size again. But what else do you think might be a reason that they might leak with this product? If they have their pants. Yeah, good point. What else? I was looking for a different answer, but I like that. <laughs> Remember that this is a moderate absorbency product is it possible that their need is too heavy could be okay because remember you're going to have light moderate heavy okay so if they're in a pad or if they're in this or if they're in a pad with this which is a very good point wow you know this just isn't really absorbent enough i better put a pad in there Oy. so we also see people putting two or three pairs of protective underwear on thinking that putting on multiple pairs of the product will will uh, give additional absorbency. But of course, it's the same thing as a medical control bed. It won't, right? Mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah. I'm going out all day today. I better put three of these on. Uh, and, and believe me, we if you think we haven't heard it all, think again. <laughs> We've heard all of it. Yeah. Actually, or, Christine, yes. I noticed on your um, the script, yes. which I really like because I, I like like but it mentions an assessment. Do you have a copy of what that is? Or what, what is that we, in the book? What we mean by assessment is that little grid or the or turn it over and you have the um, uh, the uh, um, decision tree. The assessment is how heavy is their urinary flow, light, moderate, heavy? Is their bowel and what size are they? That is the assessment. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm actually not crazy about that word. Well, because it seems a little overly clinical. Brings me back actually to something else I noticed early on when you and Matt were first starting to talk that you, you use a terminology that I think for me, not being knowledgeable in this mm -hmm. yet, um, void. Oh, uh, okay. Collection. Um, there's terminology that might be helpful to share. Okay. Um, I can do that in, ex, you know, doing this yeah. well. And, and I guess I, I've, I've kind of, over, over, the, over the years, I've gone to that um, <laughs> to just sound good, yeah. <laughs> to be honest. I, you, know, a, a year, you know, a urinary void is just it's sounds more palatable just, somehow, yeah. right? Um, if you have to change the terminology, so that your patient understands what you're talking about, if you need to talk about pee, absolutely do it. Do you know? I and you, actually, you, you brought up a good point. Um, you know, poop, pee, something like that. Use whatever terminology you certainly feel that you need to use. I've gotten into the habit from training clinicians mostly, so I've gotten into that habit. Um, urinary void is, is just urine only. Fecal or bowel or BM is fecal or bowel or BM or poop. So you do look at those two different ways because with bowel, it's, it's just you're going straight to a brief. It's just about keeping it inside and not getting out of that brief and in, on your clothes or bedding or whatever. And you will run into people that want to use a protective underwear product even though they're fecal incontinent. Yes. Because they don't, they feel like it's the bell curve. Babies wear, 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 wear diapers. I'm not wearing diapers. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll stay protective underwear as long as I have to. The reality is, it's not, it's not really designed for that. Look mm -hmm. at the fecal containment zone of a brief and the area of a 
type of formula. I mean, it's just it's clear. There's just no way that someone who's beakley incontinent could void into something like that, which is that wide, which is really a bladder control pad with the sides, or into a brief, which is clearly designed to contain somebody who has a fecal void with that large of an area. Mm -hmm. right? So it's just designed for people's needs. The other thing is, that for a second. when we were talking about activity level, and I'm talking about does this person get out of bed or not, if I'm if I'm in bed, what can do with my chair? Oh, if I'm in bed, like almost all the time, if I'm someone who maybe is kind of like almost in a coma or or whatever, and I'm and I'm in bed all the time, right? People are going to be and your your caregiver, whoever that is, is going to understand what it means to change these in bed. And, and pretty much what you do is you just you know you just turn them one side and get it in there and turn it there, them on the other side and get it out. They're going to understand that. The reason you don't want to use this, and this is why we talk about activity level, is that to get a new one on, you got to pretty much take everything off and it's very cumbersome. So these, when someone's in bed most of the time, is just not a good um, option. Okay. When someone's in bed most of the time, wouldn't you want the most to have under pads? No. no. Well, not necessarily. Actually, I'm just thinking of that. You're like a nanosecond ahead of me. The one thing we haven't talked about is underpads. And, or, I don't know. So we, you're going to have some people call these chucks. Some people call these bed pads. What other acronym? What, what other? Peach pad. Peach pad. Blue pads. If you talk to a nurse, she's going to either, he or she, is either going to call it a chucks or a blue pad. I can stop hearing to you. These are, these in the past, historically, have been kind of like almost like a drop cloth for when you're painting or something. You know what, how people often use these? They often use these just in case you've got this on and it leaks in bed. Okay? If you have the right product, that is absorbent enough that fits well, you shouldn't need this. You're going to find, however, that a lot of people have them. Why? Because under the fee-for-service model, it's because they can. I have, you know, I've been able to get, I don't know, what can you get, like 200 of these a month and I want them. Okay? There are some, however, there are some, um, I think, appropriate uses for this. Some of you, you you, uh, you sell Foley catheters and drain bags, mm -hmm. correct? These are very good. Why do you think that is in bed? When you're changing it. Or when you have someone who has a, a Foley catheter or a, an indwelling catheter, I'm not sure what terminology you guys are used to. Foley. Foley, okay. When they have a Foley catheter, you probably don't need this, okay? If you have a Foley catheter, they're probably not draining urine. Every once in a while they are. That's a whole other lecture series. But why would I need this, do you think? Probably for BM. Okay? They don't necessarily need this. They can use this. So that's one appropriate uh, for this. Sometimes um, clinicians use these if they're changing a dressing and they're irrigating a wound or you're irrigating a catheter or you're changing a drain bag, going from lake bag to night or whatever you're doing. And it's, and it's nice to do. Um, you do it right, you shouldn't need it, right? I found also that um, brain dead um, patients use more of these than non clinical folks. That was the only reason I was asking also is that when folks are being switched and removing dead weight around, mm -hmm. oft times getting a diaper under there really quick yeah. and not serving the bed is a very difficult thing. I could see that if there's if there's a lot of um, loose incontinent stool, okay. maybe. So that would be the indicator. Yeah. Okay. I, th I, th I look at this as someone who's um, in more in lieu of this. That's how I think of that. Well, maybe speak to long-term care and how it's used in long-term care because it's really not utilized. It's really not utilized in long-term care very much. Okay. 
um, very little because because if someone is in the right product and it's being changed enough, they should not need that. However, instead of this, if they have a Foley catheter, um, these are not bad if they've got uh, like little small stool smears or something like that, or they're having an enema. Sometimes you'll get, especially someone who's in a coma, they'll do a bowel program like every other day, and these are nice too. Everyone's just like, oh, how are we doing on time? Not to know, right? I know. It's 1130 almost. So, um, so as far as these, typically, you're not really going to need them much. Um, I think some of your folks are going to are going to be used to having them, and you can ask them. Well, I mean, do they really? You know, are they are they really catching stuff? No. And why we need them? Right. Yes. I assume that doesn't have any gel in it. The polymer. Some do. Some, some do. Some don't. Some are just a flop yeah. under pad. That's the UP one with the other, but yeah. just a regular flop under pad. The UP one hundred uh, does have polymer. Most of the ones you'll be using do not have polymer in them. They're just a flop. Yeah. If they don't have these, if you are um, uh, irrigating a catheter or change, uh, switching out the bag, sometimes just a towel to catch any couple of drips. Typically, it's not a just you know big cup of liquid that's coming out, right? Because there's a way to just kind of drain that excess what's in the tubing before you change those, switch those bags. And believe me, those families, that caregiver, somebody knows how to do that and has been doing that. Trying to think of. Um, so, in each of the products, um, <clears throat> in the briefs themselves, here, which that's what we're going to do. This is an actual acquisition layer that goes into the actual brief itself. So, and into the protective underwear and the bladder control pads. You see it here in the male guard. Um, what this does is this allows the fluid to be broken up and then be absorbed into the core. This is a pretty important component to it. So the first one we passed around was our standard core. Uh, we have now moved to MaxSoft technology. The MaxSoft technology allows us to have a super soft core, but also have the, the acquisition speeds that we like in the product. So typically this product is put in like, like such, rough side up. So when that's up against the skin, um, it, it really, uh, it's a little bit stiffer um, and it's a little bit more coarse. With the new line that we came out with, this MaxSoft, it's really a super soft core. And again, it goes in this way. Um, and it really creates softness within the core. So you'll feel that in some of our cores. So some of the things that are proprietary to first quality is this lavender core. So somebody's using a, a first quality product that will have this lavender core in it. Uh, with our protective underwear, one of the things that we've started doing as well that you'll notice that's proprietary to first quality is going to be the, the sizing in the back of the protective underwear. Other manufacturers don't put that sizing in there. It'll just have a colored band as to what the size is. Um, so that's something that you'll notice in some of our products as well. But this is a new technology that we've come out with, and it is proprietary to first quality. So to have that super soft core along with that mass, maximum acquisition uh, is really something that uh, is a great uh, great thing to have in our products because you've got to absorb the product very quickly, but you want it to also be very soft in, in, to, the, to the patient. Um, I don't know if there's anything else we want to go through. Do you want to, is there anything else we want to go through in the actual customer service guides? Uh, that, and for those of you that will be in the customer service group, you will get one of these for each of you um, to keep on your finger to, at your fingertips as you need. Uh, there's troubleshooting guides in here, application. So we talked about the right product, right? So based on the need of the patient, whether you're light, moderate, or heavy, talk about the right size, which the size on the bladder control pad will vary, the size on the protective underwear will vary. And the size of the brief will vary. So if you get them in the right size, that's another important piece. And then there's application. <laughs> so here's where it talks about brief application. You know, the tape tab, top down, bottom up, locks in that cuff around the, the hip to make sure you don't have leakage issues. Uh, but here's some of the application uh, questions or FAQs regarding application of a brief, application of protective underwear. Um, troubleshooting guide. So if you have somebody who's having some leakage, here's some reasons why. Leakage may occur. Skin irritation, absorbency, odor. Uh, here's some some of the sizing guides down below. We talk about troubleshooting with maxi control pads and why they shouldn't why they're different than a bladder control pad and a maxi pad. Why they're different? Like two different types of fluid that shouldn't be used the same way. Yeah. Yeah. 
how would we, because I know, especially in my family, I have some of the older women in my family, especially the ones who have more than one kid, where they're like, oh, I don't need any of those pads. I can just use the menstrual pad that you get from the store. How would you sell that? To them, like obviously, blood is different from your right. But how would you explain to them you're not using the right product and you need to? It's very simple. Yeah. In in the maxi pads, the feminine hygiene products, there's no polymer in it, and you can tell them that in the urinary pads or whatever you want to call them, there's a there's a, a an absorbing agent that's very specific to urine, and it's not the same. It's not a big fluff thing. It's not the same. So it has a complete, even though they look alike, it has a, because you're absorbing something different, it has a completely different absorbing, it has polymer, which the other doesn't, and it will perform or work better for you. So this is fluff, right, in here. This is just a fluff pad. There's no absorbent polymer at all, which is the same thing that's in the menstrual pad. So if, if you put this in water and if you squeeze it, the water will secrete from it. With this, you're going to lock that water in. So somebody who's using a menstrual pad for urinary incontinence does urinary incontinence and sits down on that, the chances are that that's actually going to squeeze out of that product because nothing's be locking it in. Yes. Right, yeah. You're going to use more of that. Right. So really, you can sell it as like a price thing, like, oh, you're going to be saving money on that because you reuse them. Sure. Probably. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, are yeah. they pretty much the same price as the menstrual? Or do you know? I mean, I've known a direct know. correlation, but who knows? Yeah. It's, I, I just keep going back to this. It's absorbed. It, it, it absorbs urine, and that's very different. And so, what's inside that pad is very different. I mean, I can go into the chemistry of it with protein and like all you of that said, stuff. Like the crazy yeah. Oh, I know. And it's you know, and, and you know, I mean, to many, it makes a lot of sense, and that's how they always used to do it. You know, I mean, they used to just that's what they people used to do years ago before there was there were products like that. I don't know if price would be the thing I would sell as much as I would sell. Um, the absorbency in the proper product, and you're yeah. most likely not going to have leakage. That's the part that is the dangerous piece to mm -hmm. the self. See, I mean, what causes infection if you're using a maxi pad where it can leak back, and you can have that too much skin irritation and mm -hmm. all sorts of stuff because it's not holding it in. Yeah. Yep. You could, and and conversely, using these for fem as a feminine pad is not the best. However, what you might find. Is you'll have you'll have someone younger who still has a menstrual cycle who is also incontinent. What are you going to use? You can use these pads. So they're older. They have a lot of kids. Oh well, when I sneeze, and it's yep. just right. weird. I don't know. Can I oh, ask yeah. a, a quick question? Yes. Um, so um, we mentioned the three tiers. Yes. Um, recommendation one, two, and three. When would it be appropriate, or is it ever appropriate to use two and three? Based on the patient need. So let's say. Uh, you're going through and you're using our standard product that you've gone through all the troubleshooting you've gone through all the different things as far as uh, the sizing the application and if, if for some reason maybe they have a higher income need so as the need grows some of our products hold more fluid than others so for instance our perfect level product which is your recommendation three is going to be the highest absorbing product out of the three products that are listed there so <laughs> So that's the basic difference. That's the basic difference. They, the, the, the total absorbency, right? So if somebody's in a product and let's say they're only being, their care is only happening, you know, a couple of times a day and someone's only changing them once a day or something to that effect, you know, that's an unfortunate scenario, but it may be a real scenario. So maybe the, the standard product, but they're not able to change it as frequently, maybe they need something that's more absorbent. Or if you have somebody who's on diuretics and, and, they're they're secreting a, a large void. Um, you know, those are the kind of, kind of patients that may need to have a higher total absorbency of a product. The acquisition, which is the most important thing, all of our products are extremely fast absorbing, meaning that if somebody has a void, it absorbs it very quickly and it locks it in and it pulls it down and away from the body. And our next in service, one of the guys that we're going to bring out here, his name is Jim Minatola. And Jim is really, he holds patents on these products. He's, he's been in the business for 30 years designing and developing these. He's an, and engineer. We'll, he's an engineer. And we'll put a laboratory in front of you. And we'll show you how the absorbency of our product compares to other products in the industry. And the absorbency of these products is extremely quick. Right? <laughs> um, and that's really where the importance is. Because once you absorb it, you lock it in, then you're not going to have leakage. And you can do multiple voids in our product. Um, but again, if someone's having really high voids, uh, you may want to move them up in the, based, on, based on that. I think what you're going to want to do is start at, at level one mm -hmm. and probably what we, we were thinking probably 90 some percent of people are going to be fine with that. But you're going to have some people who just aren't. You're and going to find some people, quite honestly, 
that have very low uh, low use for a brief. They're they're a, they're a light incontinent person, um, but somebody gave them a brief, and they've been in a brief since day one. And the reality is, a bladder control pad would probably be better for them. Get them back to the bridge games. Get them back to those kind of things. We find in the industry, when people get into a brief, they don't want to go out. Right, it kind of compromises their daily life. So we want to try and put people into products that meet their needs, uh, and that's really the design of this program right here that you guys are rolling out, which is it, it's really an uh, encouraging thing. One of the things I also wanted to cover is, as the tests get thrown at us now, you notice some of the doctor tests that are getting thrown at, at us are uh, 3 p.m. on a Friday afternoon. Got to have it tomorrow. Um, we're not going to be next day in diapers, so we're going to encourage those patients to go to the pharmacy and buy. A set of diapers to get them through the weekend and ours will arrive on Monday. Um, I noticed that a few of the tests that have hit us recently uh, were late on a Friday afternoon and you all had to pull a rabbit out of your hat to make all this happen. I mean it was like nuts. Um, we're not going to be doing that. We do that with drugs. We do that with anything that's life-threatening. Diapers are not life-threatening. They'll need to spend five bucks or ten bucks and go get something to carry them through a couple of days. And then ours will arrive Monday and we'll continue. they won't be ever late again because you know how we do business. So I just want, I want to kind of make everybody clear on this is not the same level as breathing medications. This is not the same level as life-threatening stuff that we do. So uh, I want to be sure that everybody's straight on that particular part too. So we'll get it to you as quickly Monday through Friday as possible. We will not be next day in them. Not any time in the future. So I know we've done this in the past. We're not going to be doing that anymore. So, um, yeah. They're willing to pay for overnight shipment. Like, do you need the discretion thing for them? And they want to pay for it to get overnight? Is that okay? You know, in a lot of the managed Medicaid, that won't be reality. Really? Okay. Yeah. Um, it, we do have private pay patients. If, if, as always, if they want to pick up that tab, great. But most of those folks aren't going to want to pay 65 bucks to get it there. Um, I don't know much it would be. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. We're talking a whole a whole different ball game here. It's about sixty five bucks to overnight. So we're not gonna be doing that. And I just want everybody to be be when you're talking to patients, uh, you need to go down to pay less and, and pick up enough to get you through the weekend and then we'll pick it pick it up from there. So okay. That was wonderful. Absolutely Thank you. Wonderful. Any uh, questions, everybody? Yeah. Light, moderate, heavy, big sense? Yes. Okay. So Someone has a pet and they're occasionally inflamed. Yes. You don't suggest the protective underwear. You suggest something from two or three. Um, if they're wearing a small pad, I would, I, and they're it's it's not absorbing enough. Like they're just occasional leaking, but they don't want to go to say protective underwear. What would you recommend then? If they. I think if, that would be a big difference for somebody's lifestyle. Yeah. Switch from the pad if the they are occasionally leaking, and actually, I think we can work with them on this. Did you on that formulary? You saw all those different pads. They're 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 in absorb. They're uh, I think they're in there as to absorbency level. Mm -hmm. yeah, they are. There are some pads that are more absorbent. Ultimate. Ultimate. Yeah. They wouldn't have to necessarily suggest this. You could just. So why don't I sample you on a on a pad that I think might be a little more absorbent and see if that works for you, and then go to the like the nine two three probably Matt. Yeah. So yeah. for instance, that's one of the bladder control pads, and then this is, this would be a maximum absorbency bladder control pad. And actually, yeah. you bring. I'm glad you yeah. asked that because you you bring up a good point. We were talking about briefs <laughs> and protective underwear. The bigger they get, they do not. The bigger they get, they do not absorb more. Correct? Yes. In the pads, it's different. The bigger they get, the a little bit more is absorbed each time. But I will say that there are different levels of products within bladder control pads, within protective underwear, within briefs that are set up on your product recommendation tree. So your product recommendation one is your standard product. So for instance, right, uh, your standard product is our ProCare brief. This is the this is the entry level product. If for some reason after you go through your quality assurance and, 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 and discussions with them, they need a more absorbent product, new fit would be the next absorbent product. And then the perfect would be our highest absorbent product. Now we have four or five other briefs in the same category, but based on your formulary, you have a good, better, best formulary, right? So it's just like anybody else. Based on a need, you have an entry level need, you have a good name, and you have somebody who has an, a higher acute need. This product right here um, is really is really a high level, high performing product. Uh, has a total great total capacity. Has great acquisition. This is really one of our workhorse products for sure. But you have an entry level. 
you have a nuclear product, which is a great absorbent product, and you have per, the perfect product, which is your, your top tier of product that, that you're recommending. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So the size doesn't change your absorbency, but how much polymer we put in each product, as far as how much it to the total capacity of the product is, that does change based on the different tiers. And that's how your product recommendation is set up one, two, and three. Yes, ma'am. I want to thank you, number one, for putting the two codes on here. Mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> yes. sure. That's a big one for the, sure. the billing department. Is the UPM the universal product number? Is that what that stands for? Which one here? UPM code. Oh, UPC code. <coughs> UPM. UPM. Because packaging UPM code. It's on your um, next to the chart. Right next to the billing code. Um, oh, 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 I'm sorry. You're yeah. talking on the order guide. Order guide. I'm looking at the catalog itself. So, uh, that's, yes, that's UPC code, UPM code, universal packaging. Yeah. Now, the, in the packaging, is a billable unit one bag? Uh, it could be as low as the each. It depends. Okay. Some uh, some states do it by the each. Uh, most of the states are done by the each for the T codes. Thank you. So, for instance, certain, like California has their formulary. You get so many based on uh, dollars. Uh, and then, because each product has an assigned uh, 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 cost in their system, uh, Texas, for instance, it's based on the units. Um, so every state's a little different. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. And again, we're making these for you, and we're going to be here quite a bit. And so, if there's things in here that number one, if you see something that was wrong, let us know. We'll change it. Uh, number two, if there's things in here that you want to have added to it that you found, hey, this is a great resource for me. You need to put this in here. Let us know. We'll get it added because we're making these custom for you guys, okay? Thank you. In the interest of time, I think that we probably need to wrap it up. We didn't really get a chance to um, load a lot of the products around. You can feel free and come up and talk with us and touch and feel. We didn't really go through the baby products. There are baby diapers from you know newborn on up to, to kid and training pants. Um, I think that we want everybody to have lunch. Or if, you, if you want to finish up, that's the best way. Because I think we've, we've pretty much covered things. and. Um, Okay. Does anybody else have any more questions for them? No. Well, I will be sending out a picture of you guys in the diapers. All right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we do want you guys to understand the reason we're partnering with First Quality is because they their business model is a lot like ours, where it's individualized patient care. Um, it, we want you guys to feel good about the product that you're going to be providing to the patients, and and that we are. We're gonna, there's going to be, what was it, a, uh, we're going to get qualified and... Oh, there'll be a certification program that they're working on. They'll be rolling out part this quarter of next year, so y'all will be certified in this as well, coming back to it. Sure. Um, you know how we do the um, competency testing after the uh, in-service education? It's going to be one level up. So um, We're going to be working with them to get educational material. So it's going to be, we're going to be working very closely, and, and we yeah. really do appreciate you guys taking the time to come out here today. No, but uh, along with it is that we, we want everybody here to feel good when they're talking to the patients that we're not giving them the bottom of the line product. We are, you know, like they were saying that they get the best ingredients to make sure they have the best absorbency and, and we want everybody to feel really good about that. What we're providing to our patients is, is we're taking care of them like we always have. They have one uh, thing also, there's an 800 access line uh, that you can use to ask questions so we can help the patients uh, We'll actually modify that as we're moving forward, but for right now, if you have extra questions, if you need some type of answers on there, they have specialists that have that number. So uh, we can call and um, get answers to our question and help the patient through the process. And we will be um, creating some standard operating procedures on the sampling program, so we'll let you guys know how that's going to work internally and how we're going to give that to them. So thank you guys very much. Thank you guys. <laughs> I think lunch will be delivered shortly, right? It's in the kitchen. So oh, it everybody is. Everybody okay. can hungry. If you guys want to grab some, we're going to.